And then to move very quickly into the theme this morning, the world in which we live. A couple of things I know straight away in regards to uh, stepping back into this place is that my world is a little bit different to yours. Our world is a little bit different to the world of many people that live outside, as it were, the boundaries of the influence or the direct personal influence of the grace of God. The world in which we live is something that we're conscious of and sometimes that's really, really helpful to get a a snapshot of our world. Now, I returned on Monday and I thought, well, I better find out what types of things have been going through the newsletter and all those types of things. And I found this really interesting document that some of you may have seen. It's called the Flurio Vital Signs. Our world on the uh, Flurio Peninsula is changing. And it's changing significantly. And you and I as people journeying, doing life in this space, this is in many ways our world, are more and more conscious of that. And for our pastoral workers, conscious of the fact that this world that is changing around us, you're in a specific context where that world is going to be coming increasingly evidencing things that are quite challenging. But it's not just for the pastoral workers. It's for all of us. Now, I appreciate probably... One of, one of the f- most common questions I've had since uh, Mikey and I returned was, how did your holiday go? Well, there you go. Went well. I mean, doesn't that look lovely? That's downtown Victoria, Vancouver Island. I mentioned at the footy club the other night, that's where we'd been. Somebody didn't believe me. Why is it that people don't believe me sometimes? <laughs> because occasionally you'll be in a conversation where I'm not necessarily drawing the exact picture. But this morning, that's a true picture. We had a wonderful holiday. And it provided an opportunity, as would often happen, to actually, uh, again, return to the common space and say, how do I see the world in which I live? I've been very privileged to travel. And there's a lot of fond memories that go into my file. Some of them will slip out in message times. I apologise in advance for that. But the fact that my world has got different component parts to it and your world has very unique component parts to it as well. But we're sitting in a place this morning where we're looking to live out our personal journey in the world in which we can see it as it is on a personal basis. We're looking to work it out in a relationship with Jesus. And I found that, particularly in holiday time, again, a very, I suppose, a very holding thought. How how do I, how do I introduce people to Jesus? Do you think that's a, a venture? We have to be careful not to offload it onto the pastoral workers, by the way. We each face that venture. Well, can I introduce you to Nike? That's, oh, what is that? Oh, let me explain what that is. One of, my, one of the ventures that I did personally while we were away, as a result of a birthday gift that happened a couple of months back, I was able to go on a venture of whale watching. People been on a whale watching venture? Gangs are fun, isn't it? Gangs are fun. So uh, in mid-July, uh, Margie's resting, doing some book work, and, so, and I disappear down to the wharf at uh, Victoria, on Vancouver Island and get on board this twin hull boat operated by a company called Eagle Wings. And I think, oh, that's good. That's Isaiah 41. I'm safe here. And we head out of the bay of, Van, of, of that island, Victoria Island, uh, about an hour or so out into the, into the ocean. And the amazing thing is that these people now, because of technology, satellites and all those types of things, they know pretty well where the whales are going to be. 
Now, I have strategically located myself at the back of the boat for two reasons. There's not many people there. I soon found out why. <laughs> for those who have done... But anyway. But it's, it's, it's also the space in which I can go from one side of the boat to the other fairly, fairly freely to take you know, any random photos that I might get of a whale, per chance. You know, so I'm standing in the boat, back of the boat. We've mowed it out and the engines are cut and just sit there, sighting. Sad thing is, everybody's getting excited at the front of the boat because they can see the whales. So I go to one side and I can see this, you know, the thing that comes up out the, the whale, you know, thing, and the hump and the flip and all that Oh, spectacular. So I've got a photo of the back of somebody's left shoulder, which I keep for posterity. Anyway, very quickly comes over the system because they've got uh, naturalists on board and, and they're explaining that particular whale is Nike. That's his name because they identify this whale by the tick, the distinct tick on his whale fin. You know, so it looks like Nike tick. And then they quickly explain that may be all that we see of Nike today because whales go under and sometimes they come up 20 minutes later. Well, Nike disappeared. And the next minute, there's Nike. I'm at the back of the boat, and the back of the boat is about 300 millimetres to the water, and there's Nike. And there's Nike. And there's Nike. And I didn't take this out of the National Geographic, Geographic magazine either. And there's Nike. And there's Nike. There's Nike. See you, Nike. Great to meet you. Now, somebody said, and I heard them say behind me, that's awesome. And it is. And I realise I could have actually knelt down at the back of that boat, reached my hand into the water, and allowed it to run along the back of Nike. Now, you're excited by that, aren't you? Yes. But I sensed awe when that happened. But I put it out to you and it's just a word, isn't it? It's just a word. But when it happens, you know what awe is. Let me introduce you to Jesus. The most awesome person you can ever know. But you've just heard words. It's only when you meet him that the awe strikes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Shine, Jesus, shine. And when you're introduced to Jesus, that's what starts to happen. And as a result of that relationship, we will see the world in which we live differently. We will see it through the eyes of Jesus, as these pastoral workers do. They see the world through the eyes of Jesus. That's awesome, is it not? It's the journey for every Jesus follower. 
that sense of awe that will continue to literally deepen. It will get deeper and deeper and deeper because it's the nature of his identity. You know, the most common introduction that people get to Jesus is Christmas. Would that be a fair thing to say? Yeah. And I might venture to say that the world that doesn't know Jesus has tended to wrap up Christmas. And it doesn't necessarily strike with awe that celebration. But let me read again how this person by the name of John who stood this close to Jesus he could literally kneel down and touch Jesus and this is how he introduces us to Jesus and I want to suggest I want to match it what Gail was sharing with us around the celebration of the Lord's Supper in the beginning Jesus was Jesus is God and Jesus is our creator right from the very beginning. He has made us. He's made the world in which we live and who he is sends a brilliant light to generation after generation. So I hope that as we head out this morning, appreciating the wonderful opportunity that we've had to align ourselves with a ministry of the light and life of Jesus, that we can know we're all in it. We have this wonderful, challenging venture to introduce people to the awesome Jesus. Let's stand. We'll pray together. Lord, I can't help but uh, still be singing that song. Lord, the light of your life is shining. Shine in me. By the power of your spirit, may the awesomeness of your identity be made evident in the simplicity of who we are, to the glory of the Father. Amen.